Hey everybody, it's John. I'm here to bring you a tech tip from MCAM Northwest. Did you know about the Unified Toolpath? This is a toolpath that was added to the multi-axis group a few years back, and over and over, it proves to me that it's the most versatile and coolest toolpath there is. If you don't know much about this, or maybe you're just kind of getting into multi-axis and you're trying to figure out what each toolpath does, let's take a couple minutes to take a look at Unified and why it's so awesome. Let's take a look. So this is a part that I'm going to apply some multi-axis Unified to. Unified toolpath is in the multi-axis group in the top row right here. This actually replaced a few toolpaths from earlier versions. So if you're used to seeing more toolpaths here, then it's probably been replaced by Unified. Let's go ahead and open that toolpath. I'm going to use this ball nose end mill, and I am in metric right now, so my numbers might look a little funny to you if you're used to inches. Let's go to the cut pattern page. Now, first let's select the machining geometry, or what are we actually cutting? So I'll pick the selector here, and I'm gonna start with kind of the middle of this part. Let's do this section, uh, let's add this in there, those pieces, and this little corner too. Yeah, that looks pretty good for now. Let's stick with that. I'm gonna go ahead and end selection. And if I'm not really sure what I want to do, maybe I just want it cut and I don't really care what it looks like, or if I just wanna base this off of kind of the outside of whatever that area is, I can use the automatic option. This is going to create parallel cuts right off of the boundary, collapsing inwards. There's a few other options here too, but let's leave it on parallel. I'm gonna leave everything basically at defaults here. Let's just see what happens. I hit apply and we should see a result in a moment. So here's our result. It looks pretty good, but I am seeing that there's a lot of axis movement out here because it's multi-axis, right? Well, let's take a look at that because really when I look at this shape, I can hit this with just three axes. So let's go to our tool axis control page and in the output format, we can always limit this down to three axes. I can choose this by WCSZ or from some other direction. I'll leave it at WCS. Let's apply. Okay, so I'm getting some really similar cut motion, but now I'm sure that everything is just three axes, nice and clean. Let's take a look at another example. So maybe I want to hit this area too. Instead of creating a whole new toolpath, I'm just gonna copy and paste. I wanna keep my three axis orientation in this case and the same tool. Let's copy paste down. Now, if I go back into my parameters, I'm going to reselect my machining geometry. Let's pick the floor, bottom fillet, the wall, top fillet, this flat face at an angle, and this little piece in here. Right, this seems to be the whole area. Let's go with that. Now I can use the same technique here with machining boundary parallel. Let's see what we get. Okay, this gives me a toolpath that is going to cut the whole area, but the pattern isn't quite what I'm looking for. I want something that's more centered in the middle. So let's go ahead and remove our pattern style and pick a different one. If I instead use curve rows, I can dictate what that pattern looks like as kind of an echo off of whatever I select, especially when I'm using guide. This is called geodesic programming. So let's add in a couple. I'm gonna select the first one and let's say it's the bottom ring. And the next one, let's say the top of this fillet. That should give me about what I'm looking for, something more centered. Well, it did give me something centered, but it is going to be limited between those two. And I don't want it to do that. If I add a third guide row, it should ignore that. So let's select that one there and apply again. There we go. Now I have something that's nice and centered in the middle. And then on the outside, it's morphing between kind of this area and this area. This does give me some collapsing cuts here, which I'm not a big fan of. Maybe I want to take more of a parallel approach instead. Easy. Go ahead and remove all these rows and select a different method. I'm going to use the plane option this time. If I base this off of a solid face, I can go to any angle, which is nice. I don't necessarily know that this floor is level with top. So I select here, pick the face. That looks good to me. I want it to go up Z. Let's green check and apply again. Now I get more of a parallel approach. This isn't going to finish the floor, 
but it is going to make sure that I have nice even cuts along these walls. So is this the perfect cut for this feature? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's a combination of a couple of these things and a bit of an overlap. But the point of what I'm showing you here isn't that this particular setting is perfect for this feature. It's that you can do nearly anything you want with the unified toolpath. This toolpath can do basically any kind of pattern cutting or really surfacing. If you're looking at lots of passes across an area, you can get whatever pattern you want based on picking the right thing out of this menu here. That is why Unified is so cool. In the past, if I was torn between using a morph or a parallel toolpath, I'd have to try both to see what would happen. But now I just change my pattern type and we're good to go. This really makes programming in Mastercam Multi-Axis so quick and easy with this very powerful set of tools. So if you want to learn more about Unified or Mastercam in general, feel free to give us a call at 503-653-5332 and ask for sales. Or you can email us at sales at mcammnw.com. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks. Have a good day.